Hello, welcome to today's lecture. We're proceeding with the behavior ecology part of reproduction behavior. We started in the last presentation. Today we will talk about competition and some strategies in achieving the highest reproduction success. So, let's go. Firstly, I would like to tell you about reproductive competition. So, Competition for mating opportunities as one of main determinants of reproductive success is also known as a sexual selection process. There are some discussions whether or not the sexual selection is the same thing as a natural selection, being yet another way how an individual can increase their fitness, because in the end that's the, the main goal of it. But all in all, sexual selection involves both intrasexual and intersexual selection. Intrasexual selection or interaction between the members of one sex or the power of conquer other males in battle as Darwin put it. And there is the other so-called intersexual selection referring to essentially mate choice or nicely called the power to charm. Sexual selection does leads us to the evolution of structures used in combat with other males, such as deers, antlers and rams, horns, as well as ornamentations used to persuade, um, quoting the members of opposite sex to mate, such as long tail, feathers or bright plumage and so on. So these, these traits are called secondary sexual characteristics. In these pictures you can see the some types of horns and the size we will talk about it in the next the next slide. So we started with intrasexual selection or the, the selection that involves the, the interaction between the members of the same sex. So in many species individuals of one sex and most usually males compete with each other for the opportunity to mate with individuals of the other sex and these competitions may take place over pro sometimes ownership of the territory in which females reside or the other option is to have the direct control of the females themselves nice example of, of this story is a case of direct and exclusive right on females is impala reproductive behavior and their their picture you can see on the screen uh, namely impala in which females travel in large groups with a single male uh, that male gets exclusive right to mate with the females and does tries vigorously to defend this right uh, these rights against other male males which of course would like to supplant the the one that got the right to hang out with, with females and travel with them. In mating systems such as these, uh, few males may get an inordinate number of mating, and on the other hand, most of males do not mate at all. Uh, for this reason, selection will strongly favor any trait that confers greater ability to outcome other males. In many cases, size determines mating success. So, for example, the large male is able to dominate the smaller one, and this is a really known um, example in the nature. And this has for the result that in many territorial species, males have evolved to be considerably larger than females, um, for the same simple reason that the largest male are the ones that get to them to mate basically so such differences between sexes are referred to as um, sexual dimorphism and on these pictures you can see some examples we started talking about sexual uh, dimorphism uh, in um, context of, of body size so males are usually larger than females but there are some other options how this uh, sexual dimorphism can, could be expressed 
so next to the body size in, in the other species, males have evolved structures used for fighting such as horns and antlers and large canine teeth. And these traits also often are, are seen as a sexual dimorphism and they may have evolved because the advantage they give in intersexual conflict and we'll talk about uh, that a bit more in the next slide. Just to get back to intersexual selection, so previous slide was about intrasexual selection, this is intersexual selection, so basically uh, how to persuade an other sex to mate with, the, with you specifically, so uh, interaction between two opposite sex. The, the same way secondary sexual characteristics, so we mentioned like, um, for example, sexual dimorphism and the, the, the part of it, where the traits that mm, participate in intersexual selection, so male to male encounter, uh, the same principle works here. So some special traits are preferred by other sex. So they are determining one's success with opposite sex. So on one hand, you have some characteristics that were used for male to male combat, and then there, the same idea was used here so you can develop some characteristics that were favored by the opposite sex so you have more success in that kind of strategy these characteristics determine success in intersexual selection or quoting choosing a mate game and these characteristics are called ornaments and darwin was godfather of, of this idea some of the examples of these are, for example, pea hands, which prefer to mate with peacocks that have more spots, of course, in their long tail feathers. Or similarly, female frogs prefer to mate with males with more complex goals. Uh, traits held to be due to sexual selection often conflict with the survival fitness of the individual. Those fancy ornaments that are exaggerated to attract females' attention often attack more than just female attention, but predators as well. And good example of this is a paradise bird male with a bright and colorful feather, which you can also see on the picture here. On the uh, one other back side of the ornament is that can all, they can also be robust and heavy, so complicating fast moving and hiding for, from predators. Another problem arises, and that is they often, those traits are energy expensive for an animal, uh, reducing their survival rate and resistant ability in the crisis. And I will leave you with this interesting uh, conflict of, of pros and cons about ornaments developed with males in, in uh, intersexual selection or choosing a mate game. And we will discuss it in the next presentation, so be sure to follow the next one as well. Thank you for listening. Bye.